with Rick, he always stood behind Conan O'Brien, especially, which was such an out of the box idea at the time, because he'd never been on television, certainly in any hosting capacity. He had written for The Simpsons. He'd written for Saturday Night Live. He was on The Simpsons when he got the job to host Late Night. And on top of that, it's following David Letterman, who not only was iconic for how he handled television at 1230 at night and just created a generation of followers, but also he was moving into this incredibly high level position at CBS at 1130, which is like a real, it was a real competition. And so the pressures that were felt from on high at the network, which again, you know, I was in high school and college at the time. So I was just watching it from afar, but the pressures were enormous. And so the easiest thing to do in that situation is to say yes to whatever your boss wants. And depending on the boss, they were ready to, I think, pull the plug on some of these shows and, you know, hit the reset button. And Rick was always, he stood behind Conan and he was the one who like, he just didn't miss a day. He, he never, he, he always worked. Um, and so he knew everything. He just knew everything that happened on that show. He knew how it was growing. He could watch the growth. He could see the progression. It is his job. That's his responsibility. That was what he was hired to do, but it would be so easy to skip a Thursday, to go home early, to keep your eye on something else. And he never did that. Um, and he always had smart notes and thoughts to give on shows. But also, I think he had a loyalty also because he, I'm getting a little choked up thinking about this. Uh, he just had a real belief. He had a real belief in what Conan and Jeff Ross and that group wanted to do and what they were trying to accomplish that was different. And sometimes different takes a little while to come across on television and to be accepted. And I mean, not just television, but certainly there. And when it pays off, as it really did there and in, in a lot of places, but the Conan's, I think, the best example. It's they'll talk about him forever at the Conan show. They never forgot it. And they still don't. You know, they're wrapping up their TBS show and at the end of this month. And then they're gonna go on to do another show. I'm just a fan at this point. I'm not, I don't work with them anymore. But they uh, you know, I, I just anytime one of these things happens, whether it's like an anniversary moment or you know, a lot of them came to uh to celebrate Rick's life when we had a memorial, or even just something like now. I'll just give you one example. So do you watch Saturday Night Live or are you familiar with Saturday Night Live at all? Not uh, so familiar. So there's a comedian on the show. Her name is Melissa Villasa in New York. And she's been on the show for probably five or six years. She does a lot of impressions. She was a guest on Conan. And on the show, she did an impression of uh, this old show from the 50s, 60s called The Little Rascals. I'm not going to try to do it. I, I'm not a performer. Um, but she did all these little voices of all the little rascals. And it was hilarious. The first person I thought of was Rick because he would have found that absolutely hysterical. He loved old television. He loved classic TV. He loved that sort of like quirky thing where you could bring something from the 60s and it could still be relevant now, even if you didn't recognize the show. And it tickled Conan in the interview as well. And after I watched it, I sent an email to, uh, to Jeff Ross, who's the executive producer at Conan and a friend. And I just said, like, Rick would have loved that. Like, he just would have loved it. And he wrote back something very similar, like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was one of, I thought of it too. And uh, so it's just like, they're never too far away from our thoughts, I think. That's how much of an impact he had on, on all of us.